That's when you know it's good gospel. Yeah, I'm at 73. <laughs> Got my heart rate up. You ready for the word? Yes. 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 Today we're talking about deck the halls. Deck the halls. We'll be in John chapter 1, verses 6 through 13. Deck the halls. So when we deck the halls, we decorate what? The inside and the outside, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we make sure we, we get everything looking all nice and pretty because maybe we're expecting special company during the holidays. Or maybe if you're expecting no one, you just like the lights and you just like the decorations for your yourself. Now, I myself, I have been struggling this year to decorate. Any, anybody else? <laughs> I put my tree up on November 20th. And it's December 13th, and there is still not a single bulb on it. <laughs> I have hung stockings with care. And every time I turn around, they're down on the ground. And when I ask my cats, they're real quiet about it. They're real quiet. Yeah. I was driving uh, on the way to church a couple days ago, and I noticed those air-filled decorations that people put in their yards, which are awesome. Because they're like so big and they, they're so bright and colorful. But I saw that my one neighbor's, it, it, it didn't look right. It was a windy day and, and the decorations were blowing all over the place in the yard. And, and it hit me. I said, I thought, wow, don't we do that? We deck the halls, we deck our lives with things that the world says are pretty and flashy and everything we should always want and desire. Will we deck our lives with things that make our flesh feel good and curls our toes and, and gives us that gooey, gooey feeling, but our spirits are just being tossed back and forward in the winds of life. Our souls are aching for something that is more secure, aching for something that is solid. So we're not tossed around by the cares of the world. This Advent, let us deck the halls with a little bit more than our typical decorations. Let's make a determination to deck the halls and to fill our lives with the light of Jesus Christ, the soul-saving light of the world, Jesus, the creative light, who breaks through the darkness, and gives us power. Come on, somebody say power. 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 Let's go to God's word to find out about this light that gives us power. John chapter 1. I'm reading from the NRSV starting in verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. They're talking about John the Baptist here. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him, but to all who received him who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of blood or the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. The word of God for all people. Thanks be to God. One thing I love about John the Baptist is that he is secure in his identity. Yes, he was called to do a great work. Uh, he was called to uh, do a great work for God and for the community, preparing the way for the Messiah. He was a witness, though, to the light. He knew his role, and he understood God's plan for him. His identity was straight, and he made sure everybody knew, look, I ain't the light. Mm -mm. I am not the Messiah. I'm not even the second coming of Elijah. No, I'm just John. I'm just the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of God. 
John was a witness called to testify to the light, a witness called to deck the halls and to display the true light, Jesus Christ. You see, when we turn our, our faces to the true light, it enlightens us. It illuminates the truth of who God has called us to be, our true identity in God, so that we don't have to fake it in front. We can be authentically who we are. As we engage with the light of Christ, we will see, or see clearly if we are a disciple or if we are not a disciple. As we turn our face to Jesus, we will see clearly if we are living like a child of God or if we are not living like a child of God. Galatians 3 says we are the children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Romans 8 tells us if we are led by the Spirit of God, then we are the children of God. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Our text in verse 12 says it like this, but all who receive him, all who welcome Jesus into their lives, those who believe in him, that Jesus really is a wonderful counselor, a prince of peace, a mighty God, an everlasting father, all who receive and believe he gave power power to become something better than, I don't know, a social media influencer. Power to become something better than rich and famous, something better than bold and beautiful. For those who receive and believe, he gave them power. Many of us, for the past nine months, we felt powerless, right? We felt like things are so far out of our hands. Things open and then they close. People come and then they leave. And, and things are changing faster than we can even keep up. We feel like there's nothing we can do about it. We feel a little powerless these past nine months. But the good news, the good news is that we can have power. God kind of power. Power to reveal the light. Power to do something, to still make a difference, even through a pandemic, to, to make a difference in our own lives, but also in the lives of others. For when we receive Jesus and believe in his name, we get the power to become children of God. Children of light. Children of hope. Children of joy. John the Baptist, he never got it twisted while he was out there in the wilderness crying out. Even when he became popular and folks started coming to him in, in, in droves, he was so popular that he even had his own band of disciples. Yet he was still solid on his identity. That didn't go to his head. He knew that there was one greater than he who was coming and he kept pointing to the future of the one who was to come. You see, truly knowing who we are in Christ empowers us to be the authentic witness and to testify with conviction, to testify with, with authority when we know who we are in Jesus Christ. You see, a witness testifies what they have seen, right? Whether it's an accident or if you're in court, you testify what you've seen. They tell what has happened. That, and sometimes they share what's going on currently, right? And we need witnesses in our community and in our lives who will share what God has done. Who can study the, the books and the history and, and can tell of God's wondrous works back in the day. And we need witnesses who are aware and have discernment to say what God is doing right now. But I believe the Spirit of the Lord is raising up a generation, people who will not only see and witness and testify what happened in the past, they don't just know what's going on in the, in, in the present. 
God wants to use them to speak and testify and declare what will come, what shall be in the future, what God's activity might be down the road. You see, Advent season is all about pulling back the veil and seeing into the future with faith, hope, joy, and love. Striving to see, striving to witness and testify about what God has blessed you to see with discernment into the future. That's not just for you, but you need to testify about it, share it so that others might be blessed by what God has shown you what is to come. It's not just something for folks who are in the Bible. It's not just there for, um, you know, Moses and the prophets and Abraham. I believe God wants to do that with his people today in 2020 to give us a glimpse into what is to come. Throughout scriptures, we see that God has used people that way. And the one that jumps into my heart is Mary, Mary, the mother of Jesus. When she received the angel's message that she would give birth to the Messiah, she received it and she believed it. And later we find Mary testifying to Elizabeth about the promise of God that would come about the word that would be fulfilled in the future. And when she testified to Elizabeth about it, it said that little John the Baptist in the belly of his mama started jumping and shouting. He was praising God about the future that would be revealed. <clears throat> hmm. Nine months ago, our world, our lives began to shut down and go into a place of isolation, a place of darkness. And just like John the Baptist, as he was a baby in his mama's womb, it was dark in there. He was isolated. Nobody was in there. He wasn't reading scriptures in there. He wasn't looking at the news. And yet, when he heard the promises of God, he was able to shout even in the darkness of a womb. Baby, we might be going through a season of darkness, but God is calling us to be people who shout for joy in the darkness. People who still proclaim that the promises of God are true. People who still testify to the light of Jesus Christ that is coming. When we shout, when we deck the halls of our houses and our church, we are saying that there is still hope, even though it may seem dark. We keep stretching out in faith to serve others, to give generously, to love the least and the lost and the lonely. We, we're not ignoring the difficulties. We're not saying that, you know, the bad news isn't real. We're just shouting in faith that, baby, that still is good news. We are shouting in faith, although it feels like you're sitting in darkness, there is a God of light and love and hope that wants to bring you out of that darkness and into his marvelous light. We deck the halls. We're saying that Jesus is coming. The light, T-H-E-E, -E, the light. Better than what we can buy at Walmart. <laughs> or we can put on our trees, or we can even light the altar. The light is coming. Jesus Christ. So let's walk. Let's walk in the light of the Lord. Let's, let's deck the halls with the fruit of the Spirit. Let's walk in the light of the Lord and the children of God today and forever. Amen. 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 Let's pray. God, we thank you for the opportunity to deck the halls. We thank you, Lord, for the challenge testify and witness to your light even in dark times. And we don't have to fear the future, Lord, because you are with us wherever we may go. Thank you for the truth of your promise. Thank you for the truth of your word. Let it be real to us this week. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.